In this video, I'm going to explain why you should not try to become a commodity broker and why if you are already a commodity broker, you are not going to become wealthy. And actually, it's even worse than that because pursuing deal as a broker will prevent you from becoming rich. I needed to do this video because I know that a lot of you guys that are watching this YouTube channel are wannabe or are brokers. And I'm also sure that you want to make a lot of money. This is why I need to tell you the truth so you can correct your course of action now, even if it's painful for you to hear. So keep an open mind and please watch to the end of this video before commenting below how I am our wrong guy am. okay and seriously in the meantime stop wasting your time doing stuff like that so here is everything that we are going to see in this video and we have a lot to cover so let's dive in and let's start by quickly defining the difference between a trader and a broker a physical commodity broker is an intermediary that connects buyers and sellers of commodities. They facilitate transactions but do not own the commodities themselves nor take any risk. They earn their income through commission on the transaction they facilitate. On the other hand, the traders buy and sell commodities and take the risk of ownership. Traders make money by selling raw materials or commodities at the time, location, quality and payment terms required by their clients. Traders will be paid in form of a margin to take on all the risk related to the supply chain. In short, a broker takes no risk and lives on commission. A trader makes money by taking risk off their counterparties. It's two completely different business models. Now that we have that out of the way, let me clarify something else. This video is not about financial brokers. There are a bunch of companies that broke crude oil swaps, OTC product on milk, forward contracts on grains, and so on. So this video is not about financial brokers, even though the papers that they deal with are related to commodities. The other type of commodity broker that this video is not about are brokerage firms that big players use to obfuscate their positions. In extremely competitive markets where there are only a handful of players active, everyone is looking at each other trying to deceive if the competition is long or short. So in those extremely specific markets, big firms use brokers to test the market. Let, let's see if someone buys at that price. Let, let's try the market. Or if they don't want to build up a long position and they don't want their competition to know, they will send orders to a bunch of brokers to hide what they are doing. They are quite sizable uh, brokerage firm that works on this specific market segment. And this video is not about those firms. Now that I'm over with the context information, it's time for you to listen carefully, especially if you are part of the 0.1% of the people that broke a deal uh, and made money uh, as a solopreneur. Because I'm telling you guys, you are f and you need to stop doing it right now. And let me explain why in an instant. But first of all, you need to understand why Commodity brokerage is the weakest business model ever. The main problem comes from a misalignment. Let's say that you broke a deal of call. Luckily for you, the deal went well and you got paid a commission. But then emerges the main problem. For the next deal with the same counterparties, your value are negative. As now the buyer and the seller, know each other so they don't need you and it's even worse than that they would be better off without you it's important to understand this market incentive the incentives are there for your customer to turn back on you 
once the first deal is successful. Because then you are going to suck money off of him, even though you are not really useful anymore. And this is the complete opposite with a commodity trader. For a commodity trader, the more deal you close with a counterparty, the more trust you build, the easier it gets. For a broker, the more deal you close with the same counterparty, the more they want you out, the more they resent you, and ultimately, the more difficult it gets. I mean, it's a really shitty business model. You cannot create long-lasting value, and every customer, every counterparty, you need to do everything again. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Now, let's go a little bit deeper and explain why pursuing deal as a broker will prevent you from uh, creating a meaningful business that could ultimately make you rich. If your dream is to build a business, to make a living and one day make you rich, it's possible with a commodity trading firm. You start with small deal, with small volume, you slowly build up your knowledge, your network, and gradually strengthen your balance sheet. And years after years, get access to better financing instruments. I've seen it with my own eyes happening countless times. And the problem is that this path doesn't work with a brokerage firm for two main reasons. As a broker, you want to close big deals to get a big commission. So let's say that you specialize in coal and that you broke a bunch of 50,000 metric ton shipment. You made what? One box uh, per metric ton, maybe two bucks per metric ton. It's uh, 50K or 100K. I mean, this is cool. Um, it's a lot of money. I'm not going to argue against it. But if you want to build a company, th this is not that much. I mean, that amount won't get you far. Especially if your idea is to start trading the flow that you broke. In the example of the coal shipment. So if we say that the coal is 100 US dollar per metric ton, and you need 50,000 metric ton to finance that deal, you need 5 million. How are you going to get this money? I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's extremely unlikely that you would find someone or some entity that would finance you. So the problem is uh, for a broker, you want to broke big volume because this is how you are going to make money. But then this is not the best path to start trading because you won't find the, the capital to finance the same trade as the one you broke. To make sure that you understood my point, let's take another example with a very, very hot commodity right now, copper. I think every week now on LinkedIn, someone asked me for 2,000 metric ton of uh, copper cathode a month. So I don't know what's going on with uh, cathode right now, but uh, <laughs> this is a hot commodity for brokers. So let's say that you are a successful copper cathode broker and now you want to move into trading to build a bigger business and a more sustainable business so let's say that you have the opportunity to close a very small deal like 100 metric ton of copper cathode here are the current copper price um, and to make it easier let's say that it's 8,000 us dollar per metric ton so times 100 metric ton 800k cargo that you need to get finance again how are you going to get this money? To sum up my point, if you want to start trading and you don't have access to a large capital like 99% of us, you should not spend your time pursuing deals that are in no shape, way or form at your reach financially. Don't spend time building up your knowledge, your network in a commodity that is impossible for you to start trading as the capital required is too high. Got it? Now let's tackle the second reason. As a commodity trader, you want to borrow as much money as possible, as the idea is to use all the leverage in the world to get a better return on your equity. One important idea is that over the year, you need to strengthen your company balance sheet so you can get access to more and better borrowing opportunities. But the problem as a broker is that you get commissions and commissions don't really strengthen your balance sheet towards financiers willing to lend money against commodities. L let me give you an example. It's better to do a deal for 1,100 US dollars 
that goes on your company balance sheet and only profit 100 US dollar that getting in commission 2000 US dollar. You don't believe me? So let's say that you do this deal once a month. At the end of the year, your company revenue is 1.2 million and your pocketable money is 12,000 US dollar. 1.2 million should be already enough to start getting a small line of credit from your local bank that will allow you to double your deals. Then next year you could do 2.4 million in revenue, pocketing 24,000 US dollar and finding another credit line and so on and so on. You got it? In the trading case, you built a company that is an asset and you have potentially unlimited upside. In the brokering case, you don't build an asset that could have residual value and you have capped long-term profit. So maybe, hopefully, you are now in the position where I convince you <laughs> and uh, you are now thinking, okay, Damien, uh, I, I believe you, but now what? What I would recommend you to do is to switch toward a commodity or toward a part of the supply chain that you could finance yourself. For instance, if you deal with coal, try to act at the fobbing stage. It's at least uh, 1,500 trucks to fill a 50,000 metric ton vessel. Don't tell me you cannot get a piece of this cake. Depending on the coal, a truckload will cost 2,000 US dollars, so then five truckloads will cost 10,000 US dollars, and let's say that uh, you pay five trucks uh, at the mine, you deposit them uh, at the port, and then with the money you pay again five new trucks at the mine, you deposit them at the port, and so on. And then you can make roll your money like this to start to create a small balance sheet um, and maybe eyes at bigger opportunity down the line. Or let, let's set me as an example. I did not have the, the money to start up an energy company, you know, an oil trading company, gas trading company, and so on. I mean, you need hundreds of billions and <laughs> I, I don't have them. <laughs> now, now, uh, today, today. So I got into the biomass trading business. You need way less money to trade biomass than crude oil. And for me, it's a wedge into the energy industry. So find something that you can finance yourself and do it. And if now you say, oh, Damien, yes, I know, but if I finance uh, myself, I mean, I could lost it all. It's a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money, so I don't, but I'm, I'm so afraid to lose all of my money. So what should I do? So if this is what you think and you are too afraid of putting your money on the line, you are not made to own a commodity trading business. That's it. <laughs> okay, so that's it for me today. I hope that you liked the video and that you learned something. And if you are tired of being a broke broker, just click the first link in the description below and you will land on the Shipping and Commodity Academy. Um, and yeah, please let me know uh, in the comment below if uh, you think that uh, this video is full of <laughs> and that I am full of <laughs> and that you can be uh, the wealthiest uh, commodity broker in the world uh, and that uh, I really don't understand what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> yes, please, please put a comment below. I'll be happy to, to answer. Ciao.